universe on a large scale appears to be static. The stars and constellations that make up our night sky pretty much remain stationary relative to each other over a human lifetime. Of course, we see the moon go through its phases over a period of a month. And if you're keen on keeping a track, you can also see the planets traversing across an otherwise static background of stars. But that is about it. Even though the stars that make up our galaxy and the myriad of other galaxies are moving around at several kilometers a second, we see them barely move. The distance between the stars in our galaxy and any other galaxy for that matter is so huge that even these kilometers per second speeds are too slow for us to notice any significant change over our short lifetime. However, there's an entire branch of astronomy that is dedicated to studying changes in an otherwise static night sky. This branch of astronomy is known as time domain astronomy. At first glance, this image might seem like any other images of a nebula that we have seen in the past. It is only when pictures taken over a period of months and years are put together to form a movie, we see the nebula is dynamic with ripples emanating from its center. What we are looking at are the remnants of a star that was between 9 to 11 times the mass of our sun, which at the end of its life blew up in a supernova about a thousand years ago. There is documented evidence that on the 4th of July 1054 AD, people across the world noticed the sudden appearance of a star blazing in the daytime sky. It was so bright that it outshone the planet Venus and temporarily became the third brightest object in the night sky. The guest star remained visible in the daytime sky for some 23 days and at night it shone near Tianguan a star we now call Zeta Tauri in the constellation of Taurus, the bull, for two years before fading away. Stars typically end their lives in two ways. Smaller stars until eight times the mass of a sun puff out their outer layers leaving a dense white dwarf behind. These are the beautiful planetary nebula we see. If you look closely, you can spot the white dwarf that was left behind at the center of each one of them. Stars heavier than 8 times the mass of a sun go out with a bang, leaving behind either a neutron star if the star is between 8 to 29 times the mass of a sun and a black hole if a star is anything larger than 29 times the mass of a sun. The progenitor star that gave rise to the Crab Nebula was between 9 to 11 times the mass of a sun and hence went out with a bang leaving behind a neutron star made up mostly of neutrons. The neutron star that was left behind is about 20 kilometers across and has a rotational period of about 33 milliseconds. That is, it completes one rotation every 33 milliseconds. What we see here are the relativistic outflows produced by the neutron star that generate synchrotron emissions, which are responsible for most of the emissions from this nebula. Like a lighthouse that emits twin beams of light, this highly magnetized, rapidly spinning neutron star emits twin beams of electromagnetic radiation out of its magnetic poles. These beams appear as pulses of radiation emanating from the rapidly spinning neutron star as they sweep across the cosmos. Hence, these neutron stars are also called pulsars. The Crab Pulsar produces an equatorial wind that generates the ripples we saw earlier when slamming into the surrounding nebula. The Crab Pulsar is also visible all the way from radio waves to gamma rays and it is one of the brightest gamma ray sources in the sky. Whenever a supernova goes off, astronomers point their telescopes at it to study its spectrum and see how the light eventually fades with time. This helps them determine the type of the supernova and the physics behind it. In the case of the supernova 1054, Astronomers had to piece together the evidence that was left behind from the supernova to determine its type. Until recently, supernovae were categorized into two main types. One is a type 2 or a core collapse supernova. This type of supernova happens when a star about 10 or more times the mass of a sun detonates at the end of its life, leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole. The other is a type 1 supernova which happens when the remnant of a sun-like star called a white dwarf accretes material from a nearby companion. 
Matter piles up on the surface of the white dwarf until it reaches its stable limit called as the Chandrasekhar limit which is 1.4 times the mass of our sun. Once the white dwarf crosses this limit, a runaway thermonuclear explosion rips the white dwarf apart leaving nothing behind. A third type of supernova was theorized back in 1980 called an electron capture supernova that should occur in stars in a narrow mass range of 8 to 10 solar masses. Electron capture supernovae also produce neutron stars like some type 2 supernovae but before the star can die magnesium and neon atoms that have piled up in its core begin capturing free floating electrons around them which are responsible for the outward pressure keeping the star's core stable as the electrons are absorbed it reduces the outward pressure causing the star's inner regions to collapse into a neutron star while the outer regions simultaneously blast outwards as a supernova explosion until recently type 3 supernova were never really observed however that changed in march 2018 when a supernova was spotted in the galaxy ngc 2146 which lies roughly 30 to 40 million light years away in the constellation of camelopardalis What was unique about this new supernova was that astronomers were able to compare the images obtained from Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescope of this host galaxy before and after the explosion. This helped them to identify the progenitor star that blew up as a supernova. The observation fit the theoretical model perfectly matching all six expected criteria for such an event. Similar to supernova 2018 ZD, astronomers have long suspected Crab supernova was an electron capture supernova. In fact, it was previously the best fitting example for such a supernova. The Crab does fit several of the criteria for an electron capture supernova. Like a neutron star is left behind, the chemical composition of the nebula matches that of a electron capture supernova. and the way the ancient records detail how the light steadily lingered in the daytime sky for 23 days and remained visible at night for nearly 2 years before dropping off furthermore the way the nebula's filaments continue to slowly expand over time indicates they are moving through a cloud of material likely from the progenitor star before the blast with the observation of supernova 2018 zd astronomers now think they've uncovered the strongest evidence yet linking the crab to an electron capture supernova seeing the crab in this new light could help researchers better develop their model of electron capture supernova by providing an example of how they evolve in the centuries after they explode and that in turn will reveal more about the galaxy and the universe we inhabit including how the flashy deaths of massive stars fling the building blocks of life across the cosmos <laughs>